Hello and welcome back to this Learning Mari from Scratch tutorial series that I'm making. I've decided to pull out the paint buffer and make its own video. Why have I done that? Well, because when you're learning Mari, the paint buffer is usually the hardest thing to get your head around. So uh, rather than overloading you with loads of things in one video, we're just gonna go through this and the concept of the paint buffer. It's kind of this elephant in the room because unlike a lot of other texturing software, say for example, Substance, which you paint straight onto your model, Mari doesn't work like that. It has this thing called the paint buffer before you can put paint onto your model. So the way I like to imagine it is it's as if you're painting onto an invisible pane of glass between you and your model. So you paint on this pane of glass, the paint buffer, and you can do lots of different things to it while it's on there. Like you can manipulate it, you can distort it, you can erase it before it all gets put onto your model. And then when you're happy with it, when you're happy with whatever's on the pane of glass, on the paint buffer, you can bake that down onto the mesh. So there's no better way to show this than to actually start painting in Mari and demonstrate it because there are ways to demonstrate this perfectly. So I've got my object here and I am just gonna start painting. And you can see here, I have got some paint on my model. Now, if I were to move my camera or I were to press the bake key, which is the B, with the current settings I have, what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically bake it to me onto the mesh and I will see it on the mesh now. You can tell that because down here where my mouse currently is, it will tell me that it's pre-calculating. It's gonna take a second while it goes from the paint buffer to my mesh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Alt to rotate the camera and it's gonna think about it for a second and now it's baked onto my mesh, great. And if I look back to my history view, we can see here that when I moved the camera, not only did I orbit, but it also did this thing called projection, which is the baking of that paint buffer onto my mesh. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this button here, which clears the paint buffer, and we have a, we have nothing again. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint again, but I'm actually gonna transform the paint buffer so we can actually see it. So the paint buffer is in this 3D view, but by default, it's just a little bit bigger than our viewport, so you can't actually see it. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna use the transform paint buffer tool. Don't worry about these tools in the next video, we are gonna cover tools and the palette menus in a lot more depth, but the things I'm using here are just to demonstrate the paint buffer. So I'm gonna scale my paint buffer, I'm gonna scale it down, and what do you know, we have this we have this white square looking at me and it tells me here that it's 4K by 4K and it's 16 bit. And this is our paint buffer. So I can move it, as you can see, this paint, which I told you is on this invisible paint of glass between me and the mesh, can now be moved around the mesh because it's not baked yet, it's on my paint buffer. And I can do a lot of things to this. I can rotate it, I can erase it, I can add more paint, all before baking. But as soon as I move the camera, then it bakes and it's on the mesh. And you can see my paint buffer is actually reset again. So if I were to scale it again, it has reset to outside of my viewport. One very important thing worth mentioning as well is you cannot paint outside your paint buffer. So here you can see me trying to paint outside of it, but I physically cannot because I've scaled it down too much. So make sure the scale of your paint buffer is correct because you can't paint anywhere that isn't on your paint buffer. That's not how Mari works. So I've got, you can see here on the right, I've got the painting palette open, and this is where our paint buffer settings are. So as you can see here, it's 4K and it's 16 bit. And if we scroll all the way down to our paint buffer settings here, this is where I can define this. So I can change it if I want to to 32 bit, or I can change it to 8 bit, and I can also change the resolution of it. So you might be thinking, well, why does the paint buffer itself have a resolution when my nodes or my channels and stuff like that has its own resolution. Well, quite simply, this space here is 4K. But say for example, my model was only a 1K texture map because I was gonna have it really very low resolution. I don't need to be painting 4K within this small space because none of that information is gonna be kept because as soon as it's baked down, it's baked down to this 1K layer or node. So all of that information is lost. Also, it makes it quite a lot slower. So for example, if you're working with a really low resolution mesh, you can change this to 1K, 2K, and then that way it will bake and you'll be able to paint quite a bit quicker. So it can really help just in terms of speeding up your workflow. But you can also see we've got some really big resolutions. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never used a 16K image at work and I've never used a 32K image at work. That's huge. Nobody would export textures like that. So really, why would it give me the option? Well, if I have a higher resolution paint buffer than the texture that I'm actually painting to, it doesn't matter about the scale of the square because no matter how big it is, I'm not gonna be losing resolution. So if I've got 4K textures, but this is 8K, if I scale it out so it's twice the size of my screen, then this space will still be 4K and I'm not losing any resolution when that bakes down. So that's just something to keep in mind. So often I've known quite a few people at work that will set their paint buffer a little bit lower so that it's quicker to work with. And they will just zoom in on the model so that my paint buffer, which I'm seeing here, doesn't lose any resolution when it bakes. 
even though it's lower than the actual nodes or paint that I'm baking into because they're close enough to the model, there's no resolution lost. So we also have the color depth of our paint buffer. So if you're painting with 16 bit images, if you change this to eight bit, obviously you're going to lose data. So it's worth keeping that in mind. That said, working with 32 bit, if you're not painting 32 bit projections or anything like that, will make your computer go a lot slower for no reason. So by default, I have it to 16 bit. And if I need to up it, then I can. And that's just worth knowing. I can also hide it if I want to, so it doesn't show that description there in the bottom left. So we have a couple of other options, like here I can set the scale to one if I want to, one by one, and then that fits my screen space perfectly. If I reset it, you'll see that by default it's set to 1.4, so that's why it was outside my screen. I can also click here where it says reset on bake. By default, this will be enabled, so it will change the scale back to its default every single time that I bake, but I can turn that off so that it keeps the scale that I set it to. That's really up to you if you want to change it to that. We've also got one other option that I want to look at in this video, and that's called the bake behavior. So if you remember earlier, I was saying that I was moving the camera and it was baking for me automatically, and that's because of this bake behavior. So you can change this so that it doesn't automatically bake for you. So I'm going to move my paint buffer down to a slightly smaller size so we can see it again, and then I'm going to paint onto my mesh. However, instead of the default option of auto bake and clear, which basically means that whenever I move my camera, it will automatically bake whatever's on the paint buffer, then clear out the paint buffer so it's reset and fresh again. I'm going to change it to clear only so we can see the different options. So clear only, it won't automatically bake it for me, so I have to press the B key to do it for myself. However, it will still clear it afterwards. So let's try that one. So I'm going to do this with red. What we can do is I'm going to move the camera and you can see I can move this around. So this is useful. Say for example, I'm trying to do some detailing on the face. I can start painting this, but oh no, it's not quite lined up right. So if I don't have it to automatically bake, I can move the camera and then line it up a little bit better. So I'm going to press the B key and we'll see what happens. And you can see this has baked it and my paint buffer is clear again. However, let's look at manual and see what that does. So that won't clear it out. So we use a different color this time and I'm going to draw something here and I'm going to move the camera. And as you can see, it doesn't bake it, but this time I'm going to press B and we'll see what happens as well. So it's baked it, but my paint buffer has still got that information on it. So I can bake it again. I can bake it again and I can keep doing that. And then if I want to clear it, we've got this button over here, which is called the clear the paint buffer. And that will get rid of that blue dot for my paint buffer. I've also got a button here, which will reset the paint buffer and pop it back to the default scale, which at the moment is 1.49. So that's the paint buffer. So you can't, might be wondering, well, why would I want it to not clear? Well, as you can see here, I can repeat the same detail. So say, for example, I have screws. I can quickly project one screw in a place, and then I can move the paint buffer, project it, move the paint buffer, project it, without having to repaint it every single time. So that's so helpful. I can't tell you how many times I've used that when detailing objects inside of Mari. That said, I don't always want it. So I will often be changing the setting. I usually use auto bake and clear, and then I'll change it to one of the other options when I need it specifically. So we do have some other options here. For example, we've got the project on and we've got the projection mode. So we're gonna to touch on those more in the actual painting and projection lessons, but I really just wanted to summarize the paint buffer so that going forward, you understand how Mari works because it is a fundamental difference between it and other texturing software. So I hope I've summed that up. If you've got any questions, please leave them below. Join me in the next part. We're gonna be looking at the tools and the palettes of Mari. So we have already briefly looked at the painting palette, but we're gonna go through all these other ones and we're gonna go through these tools. A lot of these tools are to do with the paint buffer. So I wanted to define it up front. Cool. And you can join the Discord if you want to post any work that you're working on, get any feedback, or just say hello to some other like-minded texturing people. Cool. Take it easy. I've been Michael. Have a good one.